time dictates everything to us. It, the, the way that we've constructed our society is time tells us when it's time to buy your wife or girlfriend flowers or candy, because time is February 14th, it's Valentine's Day. Or when to wake up, when to go to sleep, when to get hungry, when to celebrate something. Everything has a time. On your calendar, every holiday, every event, every bank closing, everything is governed by time. You know, they had an experiment where they, uh, someone went into a, a bunker, underground bunker, to, to go to live there for two months. It was a, a psychology experiment. And two months later, when they came down to get him, he believed firmly he had 25 days left of the two, of the two months. Completely was convinced of that, right? Because he wasn't bound by time. So time, the, the, his mind took a different position with time because there, was, there were no mile markers. So he couldn't gauge time. And it's actually really valuable. I, many years ago, went trekking in Nepal, or schlepping in Nepal, as I say. And I, you, know, you take off your wristwatch because you don't want to know what time it is. And, and they, they're very clever that way. They say, you don't wear a wristwatch. There were no cellular phones then. And I went trekking for uh, 11 days, uh, 10 days of actual trekking, one day of orientation. And I had no concept of time, none whatsoever. I mean, I knew when the sun rose and when it set, but I couldn't tell you, I mean, when the sun's going down, I could say, oh, it's late in the day. But I had no idea what day it was, what month it was. And this was after just 10 days of walking every day. I completely lost my sense of time. And what's interesting is that the trekking experience was, you know, you're going up mountains, you're not able to breathe at 12,000 feet, your legs weigh 600 pounds each, and you're walking very, very slowly. But the people you meet, the, the nature that you experience, every day to me seemed so incredibly long and rich and, and packed with so much stimulus. And that it was an amazing experience. And when I got done with the 10 days, my perception of time was I must have been gone a month. Now, in a bunker, he thought he had 25 days left. I thought I was gone for a month. So he had no stimuli there. And that was the whole point of the psychology experiment was he had no stimulus. He wasn't in solitary confinement. I mean, he could read, he could listen to music, but he had no real stimulus. Whereas I'm trekking and I'm, I'm getting all this, this stimuli for, the, for all over. And I thought I was there a month. It was so rich and so uh, experiential. To this day, my memories of them are so incredibly vi vivid. And that's something we, we, we're going to talk about is that when you have new stimuli, when you're doing something new, your memories are imprinted in such a way that, you know, people say, all you have are your memories. And they say, you have to travel more because you, that's how you build memories. I tell that to people all the time. And those are the memories you want to build. So, uh, you know, I'm digressing a little bit, but the intensity of the experience changes your perception of time. If you realize that you are being ruled by the calendar, you have the ability to take control of it. Because right now, everyone in this room, I, I surmise or uh, believe, or, or I'm going to guess, is controlled by a calendar. You knew you had to be here by nine o'clock. The point is that we rule ourselves by this device, by our watches, by our calendars, by our phones that have time. And you can say, no, I'm not gonna do that. Now, it's not like you don't wanna get flowers for your wife when FTD decides that it should be a holiday and they lobby for it, seize candy and FTD spent a fortune to get Valentine's Day because um, that's their biggest sale day of the year. A Halloween, they, they sell enough of that candy corn in, in, you know, what is it, a month or two months that covers their entire year. How many times have you seen candy corn on the, on the shelves right now? None. But in those two months, they sell an entire year's worth and then some. So everything is based on seasonality. When things go on sale, when you're going to react to the weather a certain way so that they plan to have the winter clothes in the store. Everything is time-based. Now, it's not like you say, well, wait a minute, I want to buy a down jacket in the summer. Some things you're a slave to because you don't have control over it. But if I want to buy a winter coat in, in the summer, 
and it's, I'm desperate to find it, and they don't have it. Now, of course, online changes all that. You can buy it any time. But before that happened, it was like, okay, how do I look at South American stores and Australian stores where they're in winter right now, and I can buy it and have a chip? So there's always a way to get around things. There's always a way to get an answer, and we'll, it's a whole different discussion. But if you're aware that, that the calendar is controlling you, you then can take control of it and say, what do I accept, but do, what I don't accept? My wife and I never go out on, Halloween, on um, uh, Valentine's Day. Now, it's mostly a singles event. I get it. But, you know, certainly a good percentage of married couples do it because we go out all the time. So we don't need a date on a calendar to tell us when to buy flowers or candy or go have a special dinner. It's not important to us. Do we go out for New Year's and celebrate? Well, we go out with a, a, a couple that we are friends with and we've gone for 15 years because it's a night out. Do we care that it's New Year's? No, because by 10 o'clock we're home and you know who cares? So we don't let a calendar rule us. We take charge of it. So on Valentine's Day, we say, we're not going out. Well, you know, that's why they have DoorDash and Uber Eats and, and uh, delivery and or we'll, we'll cook something at home and we stay in and watch a movie. I don't need a date to, to recognize when I have affection for my wife and I tell her I love her, that is ruled by the calendar or by the lobbyists who made it part of the calendar. Um, this is what we were talking about before we did talk about some time management is always ask yourself what, how, you know, if I had half the time. Always ask yourself, if I had half as much, what could I do? Not just what could I do, could I accomplish this task if I had half the time? Because your brain is going to trick you. And it's going to expand the time unnecessarily because it protects itself. So you can cut the time in half. All right. How many people here, show of hands, believe that you could accomplish any general task that you set your mind to in half the time that you've given yourself to do it? then why not do that all the time? Because you're then taking back control of your time. And at the end of the day, you've gotten done in four hours what would normally take you eight. You've got four hours left. And guess what? You can go pick up your kids and go to a movie. Pick them up from school and go to an afternoon movie. And you've still gotten all your work done. Why do you deny yourself that incredible delight, that pleasure, that reward, that benefit, that bonus, that experience? Because you're letting your brain control your perception of time instead of you taking control. And that's a little bit of an oxymoron, but you understand what I'm saying. And, and be the master of your own time. How many times have you said, oh, I'm too busy? Oh, I can't. I've got too much work to do. You're giving in to it, not controlling it. Afternoon movie, let me get back to you. Let me look at my calendar. Let me see what I can do. Let me see what I have today. And you say, okay, I've got that meeting at one hour. Can we do this in a half an hour? I, I, I have a hard stop. The minute you say I have a hard stop at 1.30, so instead of 1 to 2, what's somebody going to say? No problem. I mean, unless it's a really deep involved thing where an hour isn't enough and they say we have to reschedule, that's going to happen. But generally as a rule, when I tell someone, hey, I'm really sorry, I have a hard, hard stop in 30 minutes, it gets done. Everything gets done. Just start taking control and you go, whoa, it's 2 o'clock. Or it's 2.30. I can pick my kids up at 3 o'clock at school. Off to the mall. Let's get some ice cream and go to a movie. And it's not that you do that every day, you know, the movie and the ice cream, but it's that you can take control of your time every day. Because the minute that you give yourself half as much time, you're in charge. Not, your, not the part of your brain that sabotages, not the calendar. Does that make sense for everybody? <clears throat> and you have to put this into practice. Because it's one thing to go over it in this room. See, here's the thing I don't like about motivational speakers, which of course this is not, because nobody would ever accuse me of motivating anyone. But you listen to motivational speakers and you're walking two inches off the ground. That I could use, by the way. Um, <laughs> but you get home and your dog poops on the carpet and the kids are late and you're right back where you were. If it worked, we'd all be driving Ferraris and be multimillionaires. It's a feel good for the moment. And that's my perception. That doesn't mean you have to accept that. That's my belief. But here, the things we're discussing in this room, this isn't about motivation. This is about techniques you can use and go out and do them and use them and take control to become more successful, more efficient. 
better at what you do, better at what you want to do, achieving the, the, the end results that you want, those vacations, and your time. 